Hey guys, Tracy Pelfrey here. Let's get to it. This past weekend, I thought I would check in on Denton in Lakeland, Florida. He is the pastor there for New Testament Christian Churches of America Incorporated. Let's see what he's up to. And then if we need gas, we stop and we put gas in the car. Have any of you, raise your hand if I've ever complained to you about gas. Anybody ever heard me complain about not having gas in my car, not being able to afford to put gas in my car? Okay. Just want to make sure. I know there's people out there, you know, 25 years ago, you said you didn't have any gas money. Right. <laughs> or some of the Christians, yeah, 20 years ago when you came to pick me up for church, you said you need gas money. Yeah, I need gas money to pick your lazy butt up. Call Uber. You get a car. You pay for gas. You always do that, Pastor? No, but after about 20 times of picking somebody up for church and, and being broke all the time because I'm paying for expressways, paying for insurance, paying for the tires on my car, paying for gas. No, bitch, I'm saying, dude, give me some money, man. Is they walk around with expensive watches and a designer shirt and I'm wearing something from Goodwill? Hello? Hey, sell that tie, buster. Put some gas in my car. I don't know about you guys, some of you have been pastors. It's the most thankless job you can have. It's a thankless job. <laughs> Hello? People want something for nothing. They want to take advantage of people. As a Christian, you have to stand up for yourself. It's the most thankless job you can have. Say, no, I'm not going to put up with that anymore. I'm not going to take it anymore. It's the most thankless job you can have. You've been using and abusing me, and I don't have to put up with it. God bless me. It's the most thankless job you can have. Call Uber. Call Uber. Call Uber. Call Uber. It's the most thankless job you can have. God touched my mind to save my money. God touched my mind to put it together. How about asking God to touch your mind? How about getting saved and allowing God to bless your life? No, it's up to us to bless everyone. It's up to us to help everybody dig them out of the dirt, dig them out of the trench. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. How many of them have been there for me to help dig me out of the trench? How many of them were there for me to help me when I needed help, when I was down and out, when I, none of them. They expect you to be there when they call. They expect you to be at their beck and call. They expect you to help them get what they want. Sometimes they expect you to take them to the doctor. Call Uber. <laughs> Don't call me. You say, well, when do I get to expect something? When does the pastor get to say, hey, would you do me a favor? You should be taking care of your pastor, according to the Bible. But I see around here very few that even attempt to do so. It's a low percentage. I know there aren't many that help me out. And I'm saying it not that it might be done unto me. I'm pointing it out. Even at the office, these guys made they hit the gate at 431. Whew! Nobody says, got anything to carry? You got anything else? You need anything? No, they're just gone. How many of them have been there for me to help dig me out of the trench? How many of them were there for me to help me when I needed help, when I was down and out, when I, none of them? It's the most thankless job you can have. The simple love of God that causes you to reach out. Tell somebody. Hey, you need to come back to church. You don't need to just sit at home and watch. You don't need to just sit there with your feet up and your bag of Doritos. This is unbelievable. Now, unless he's speaking to one specific person, unless there's just this bunch of groupies that only live stream their services and they're sitting there with their feet up in a bag of Doritos. How insulting. But you know who has said that first? Keckle. 
He's just being a, a good foot soldier and saying and mimicking what he has heard his leaders say. To say that is just so, I don't know, am I the only one? I think it's insulting. They're talking about this. Uh, he talked in service Thursday, September 5th, some kind of national back to church day. I don't know. Silly. Because they don't believe in witnessing to people. That's not something they promote or teach. They want to shove a card or a pretty pamphlet in someone's face and get them in so they can be preached at. Preach to. Not to have the word imparted or, or shared. No, 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 no. It's not how it works. The power of God is not powerful enough, I guess, to get through a TV screen or a computer screen or a smartphone screen. They have to be in that building for the church show. It's such, no matter how much Kinson and Keckle bellow and spit and yell and scream and pound the podium, there is no faith. There is lack of faith lack of love. And I'm talking specifically about the leaders in the organization. That's what I'm focusing on when I say that lack of faith, lack of love in them based on the services and what they say, or they they wouldn't worry about how people are receiving the word, would they? If they had faith as small as a mustard seed, they need you in the building so they can be in control of each person so that the leader can micromanage the living daylights out of each person that signs the guest book. Get them to sign that guest book. Make sure it's legible and you can see their address or contact information. And then we'll take it from here. I got one lady, she's calling. She said, my husband and I, we can't drive after dark. Is there anybody that can give us a ride? Call Uber. She lives down off of Shaw. I said, I don't know. Call Uber. But someone will volunteer. I don't know how it is now, but back in the day, when you went out and you hollowed out of work, um, the pastor and or the pastor and his family were the ones. They were actively involved. You know why? They understood that the least among them was the greatest. And how would you take care of the greatest? Now, I have no idea if Mr. Kenson already picks people up at night to help get them to church, to be a part. Or is he a pastor just in name only who, you know, he shows up and everyone's just magically there. New people are just there. I don't know. I'd like to think in my heart that he and his wife do play an active role. I'd like to think that the Keckles do. I still hold that out there, believe it or not. I wonder if, who knows, but if they haven't and if they aren't, why not? What's the reason? I think he just should just tell her to call Uber or to stay at home and and keep watching the live stream with her feet up and a bag of Doritos in her lap. Disgusting. She wants to ride to her to Bible study on Tuesdays, and she said, Pastor, will you pray? And I'm just knowing that God can work things out. God can work things out. Or call Uber.